Why was the One Piece live action so successful? There's a lot of components that go into that, whether you loved it or you hate it, you literally can't deny these numbers, but how did it get there? There's a couple parts to the answer. Part one, the crew. Starting, of course, with Luffy. Inaki Godoy absolutely crushed it as our champion of shonen, never betray his friend, smile always on his face, Luffy. Now, even though the entire cast and crew were handpicked by Oda, he obviously isn't an exact one-to-one -one counterpart to this made-up cartoon character that we all know and love, but as a person, he's so high energy. Just go and listen to him talk about getting the audition and getting prepared for the role. It got me hyped up to make this video. There's a million and one things I could say, but I'll stick to this. Naki Godoy showed up as Monkey D. Luffy. Next is Nami. And I'll say that Emily Rudd is a super fan of anime, which is a common theme you're going to hear a few times. She was raised on Studio Ghibli in late night Cartoon Network anime, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, and of course, the four kids English dub of One Piece. She knows who cat burglar Nami is, and that's exactly who she became. And for everybody that had something to say about her proportions in relation to Nami's, look. It's a sad day when a beautiful actor or actress that was casted for any of these roles as you tossing and turning at night. Boys, it's 2023. We've got to do better than cartoon body standards. Zoro. Speaking of beautiful actors, the reviews are in and people are losing their minds for McKenyu, as they should. This live action veteran, also a part-time model, is crushing it as Zoro, which at this point should be no surprise. He crushed it in Rioni Kenshin. Son of Japanese movie star and martial artist Sonny Chiba, rest in peace, McKenyu has 100% come into his own as an actor. And if he ever sees this, he should know that his dad has a son to be incredibly proud of. Next up is Sanji and Taz, Taz, Taz. Dude, let me tell you a story. I followed the main crew on Instagram right around when I made the first videos on the cast. And while Makenyu, Emily, and Nanaki already had substantial followings, Taz and Jacob, who plays Usopp, had around 10 or 20,000 combined. And we'll get to Jacob later, but I'm going to say this as plainly as possible. Taz was not fucking around. When it came to this role, for the past two years, he's been training hard hard in a multitude of martial arts disciplines these kicks are for real if you're not convinced yet listen after the cast reveal in 2021 the guy who plays sanji invited everyone who could make it over to his home and cook them a meal to bond over side note he's been hanging out with the crew i'm pretty sure him and jacob are in japan as i'm editing this last but not least Usopp. now with jacob i have a confession to make back when i wore clown shoes and took a clown car to work I was guilty of thinking that Usopp in the East Blue was kind of annoying and maybe a little bit lame. Now, whether it was Thriller Bark or Dress Rosa or any other time before or after that, you'll know that this is wrong. Jacob's portrayal of Usopp has made sure no one will think the same about the live action. His charisma and overall tone when delivering the lines and lies of Usopp, who would otherwise have a clown makeup wearing younger version of myself cringe, blew me away. Everything he says from taking credit from the things he clearly didn't do in front of the crew who clearly did them is tongue in cheek, laugh amongst friends, and every other over the top tale of his triumphs is a lot closer to a bedtime story than anything else. Jacob made East Blue Usopp a cooler character for everyone just now getting into One Piece. Part 2 Matt Owens and character changes. Matt Owens, the producer of the One Piece live action, is himself a super fan of the source material and he knows it inside and out. He was also handpicked by Oda to do this and to do it right. Now he's less of a public figure so I don't have all these stats to throw at you but he's legit and is navigating this ship to a great destination. Okay while there were a bunch of smaller character changes, a big one that stood out to me is Buggy. This dude straight up went from hee hee Buggy the Clown's getting dunked on by Luffy to a maniac you literally cross the other side of the street to get away from. Now straight up, I was caught off guard when he first showed up on screen because I was expecting to have a couple laughs with a goofy tone and instead he ended up ransoming my family. One other thing that's getting a lot of flack is the narrative changes, specifically with Garp chasing the crew right off the rip. Now I'm gonna be honest, I really like the source material rather than this plot as an anime. And I think I'm just prone to disliking any change from the original. With that said, the decision ultimately made for the purpose of adding background stakes to the plot that remain consistent throughout the season. Here's my problem. I can never experience the live action unbiased. I've watched all of One Piece twice and read the manga. There's no version of me that can see the live action without the source material in my head. But like it or not, 
this change very well could have been a critical piece in the gripping story the live action told. Us old head diehards will be witnessing a new age of One Piece fandom because of this version. Part three, Japanese dub. In direct contrast to what I just said, there's one final Hail Mary baked in for the anime fans and Japanese audience. Not only is Anaki and Taz doing the voices for the Spanish dubs, very cool, very cool. Oda got the entire One Piece anime roster to do the Japanese dub. You can literally experience the anime's emotions and line deliveries in the live action, and boy did they eat. This alone is worthy of a rewatch. Seeing a real life Luffy hit his gomu gomu bazooka while hearing the anime voice actor gave me chills. And that's a wrap. That's how you break records and set new standards. One Piece has done a lot for me, as wild as it sounds. If you know, you know. Subscribe for more content, and thanks for sailing with me if you made it this far.